in typical experiments, you would have a lot of trials. So you collect data from individuals, so subjects, and then you can perform your statistical analyses within an individual subject. So you look for significant effects within an individual, or you can pool the data together across all the trials from each subject, and then you can do group level analyses across your sample of individuals. Those actually tell you different things, subject level analyses and group level analyses. We might also call those level one statistical analyses and level two statistical analyses using that kind of pyramid of levels that I introduced in the beginning of this section. So it turns out that these tell you different things about the data, subject level and group level analyses. And so in this video, I'm going to clarify this distinction so that you understand the differences between within subjects and across subjects analyses. And I'm going to illustrate this using three different scenarios, three different situations, all with made up data. So here we, so in situation one, we have statistically significant effects within individuals, but no, uh, and also a statistically significant effect at the group level. And situation two, we will have statistically significant individual effects, so level one statistics are significant, but there's going to be no group level effects, so no significant effect across the sample of individuals. And then situation three is the reverse of this. Okay, so let me show you some fake data just to illustrate what I'm referring to here. So imagine these are data here. Each of these bars corresponds to a different individual subject. So in our imaginary research project, we have eight individual subjects that we have measured data from. And each of these bars corresponds to some effect, maybe it's a condition comparison. So let's imagine we are comparing condition A and condition B, and that gives us some effect size measure, maybe it's a t-test, and perhaps this reflects the confidence interval around that test statistic. So what you see here is that all of these error bars are above the zero line. So all of these effects are individually statistically significant within each individual person. So that's our significant subject level effects. And then of course, we also have a significant group effect because the direction of the effect is the same for each of eight people. So everyone shows the effect, the condition comparison, in the same direction. So we have significant subject level effects and significant group level effects. All right, this is, you know, this is kind of the, the situation that people often hope for in psychology and in neuroscience research. Now let's move on to situation two. Again, we have our eight individuals, our eight subjects, and this shows the effects within each individual. So what you see is that each individual person has an effect parameter has a statistics parameter with error bars that are non overlapping with zero. So that means that this effect is statistically significant within each individual person. So this person shows a statistically significant effect. This person also shows a statistically significant effect. However, at the group level, there is no significant effect because half the subjects have a positive effect, half the subjects have a negative effect. So you put all that together, there's going to be a null result. There's not going to be a significant effect at the group level. Now, perhaps this makes sense. Perhaps this is predictable. Maybe, you know, perhaps these are uh, controls and these are patient groups or, you know, perhaps these are uh, the men and these are the women and we expect them to do different, you know, behave in different ways. But the point is that the group level effects are looking for consistency in the direction of the effects across the population of individuals. And the, the uh, effects directions are not consistent across the different individuals. All right, so now let's go to situation three, which is kind of the reverse in some sense of situation two. So here we have our eight subjects. And now notice what I've done here is shown all of these bars overlapping with this zero line here. Imagine this is zero. So that means that this effect, whatever this effect is, this condition comparison is not statistically significant within any individual uh, people in this, uh, in this research. So zero out of eight people show a statistically significant effect within just their own uh, data set. However, 
the group effect is still going to be highly significant. This is a, a highly significant group effect because every individual in the group, eight out of eight people are showing the effect in the same direction. And for a group effect, that's what we really care about. We care about not so much the variance within each individual person or the effect within each individual person. What we care about at the group level is whether the direction of the effect is consistent across the different individuals. And that's how you can get a situation where there's a significant group effect without significant effects within individuals. Now, this is actually a really common scenario. This happens very, very often that the effects are small within subjects, or maybe the amount of noise is large within subjects, but different people show a similar effect, so the direction of the effect is consistent across the sample of all of your research participants. So we can do a side-by-side -side comparison of what it means to do level one statistics or within subject statistics versus level two statistics or group level statistics. So the important difference is that single subject statistics are looking at the variance of the data over trials. So if you have an effect that has a lot of variance, it might be non-statistically significant because the variance is high. In contrast, the group level effects is really just focused on the consistency of the effect, which means the average, not the variance, the average over different subjects. So you can have a lot of variance within individuals, but if the means are all in, on the same side of zero, then the group level effect is going to be significant because that's looking for consistency in the average, not so much the variance. Now, of course, there are also statistical methods for combining the within subject variance and the across subject variance. And that would be, for example, linear mixed effects models or hierarchical linear models. These kinds of models do take the variance of the individual trials into account at group level inferences. However, uh, linear mixed effects modeling is not so frequently used. So I think this is generally a good thing to keep in mind. And you can also be aware that there are more advanced statistical procedures for, uh, for combining these two levels. So another difference is that single subject analyses do not allow for population generalization, whereas group level analyses do allow you to generalize to the population. And now I should unpack this a little bit more because in fact, statistics are always about generalizing to a population. So even in within subject analyses, we are generalizing to the population, but it's a different population than what you might think. If you do within subjects analyses, what you are assuming is that all of the trials that that subject has performed in your experiment, all of the repetitions of the same stimulus or, or condition category, you assume that those are samples of a population of trials, of an infinite number of trials that that person could ever possibly do. And what you are generalizing is to the population of total trials, total stimulus repetitions that that individual person could ever possibly do. Now, that is not a really interesting generalization. A much more important generalization is to say, you know, we are interested in how human beings work. We are interested in how the brain works, not just one person's brain, but, you know, everyone's brain. We want to know how most people, most people's brains work. So what you want to do is not generalize to other trials within an individual. You want to generalize to other individuals. And that's what group level analyses allow you to do. Okay, and then finally, a final difference is that within subjects analyses generally require a large effect size, and that's because the variance at the single trial level tends to be relatively large. So if you wanna get statistically significant effects within an individual, you either need to have very small variance or a very large effect size, and the variance tends to be large, and so, uh, so you need really large effect sizes for individual, for level one single subject analyses. In contrast, the group level results, group level statistical testing, tends to be more sensitive to small effect sizes. And that is because of this feature here that we're not so much interested in the variance within single subjects, we are interested in the means. So if the variance is very large, as long as you have enough trials, 
that doesn't affect the mean. The mean is still going to go in the right direction, and at the group level, all of this single subject variance gets ignored, and we focus on the consistency across individuals. All right, so in this video, you learned about the difference between stati uh, statistical significance testing within subject versus at the group level. Now, mostly in the like psychology, neuroscience, biology, ecology, sociology, literatures, people are interested in group level analyses. And that's primarily because of this feature here. We want to generalize to as large a population as humans as we can, as is plausible, not just generalizing to other trials within that particular individual.